Hey everyone, so today I have the pleasure of talking with my friend and fellow YouTuber, Olivia. They're, they're gonna tell us a little bit about what trans day visibility means to them and share a little bit about who they are. And yeah, let's just start at the top. Could you briefly tell everyone who's watching a little bit about yourself, like any identities that are important to you, values, interests, like anything that you think people would want to know about you? Yeah, so I am a non-binary Latinx person, um, and I think that's like my 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 go-to. Like I would say, what I would describe myself as to, to other people, trans femme, and uh, yeah. So that's it. I like to play guitar, and I love my cat. <laughs> Wonderful. What's your cat's name? <laughs> uh, my cat is Fig. She's right here. She's currently there's a mess going on right there, but. <laughs> Very curious. I use every opportunity I can to show off Tipsy on my channel. Yeah. So she's actually sitting right over there. <gasps> Tipsy, baby. <laughs> yeah, so let's just kind of jump into the rest of it. What does Trans Day of Visibility mean to you? When I think of like Trans Day of Visibility, I always, my head goes immediately back to 2015 uh, prior to me coming out. Um, and I was with my my partner, um, who I'm still with, and she was telling me about how it was Trans Day of Visibility. This was before I even knew the day existed or anything. She saw it on Twitter and she reached out to tell me. And she told me, like, not in a way or not in any pressure for me to come out or anything like that, but just to kind of show me that there are people out there that are visible. And so I think when I think of, you know, this day, I think of, like, hope. I, like my my whole like thought process is just centered around hope because at that time I was so hopeful and like within the next year I ended up coming out and starting my transition and um yeah the whole process has been crazy but I I know that like ever since I like heard of trans day visibility I was just really excited and I saw a future for myself that I could be able to be myself and um that's what I think I get most out of it yeah I love that that's so beautiful was there any like particular like people in the community that you saw that kind of helped you gain hope along um, the way? It's funny you say obviously you because we're we're both from we're both from or like we met each other in Gainesville. We crossed mm -hmm. paths, and so um, like me starting my transition, moving to Gainesville, I felt like you were very like you're very known in like the trans community. Here, which is, it's cool. You ran for public office and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And so, like, I always knew of you, and it was just really exciting to, like, to be able to, um, I know, whenever, like, we first met each other, that was always, uh, that was obviously really cool. And, yeah, I've, I've, like, you know, have been a kid that's raised on the internet, so I've watched a bunch of YouTube and, um, you know, have loved, you know, seeing a bunch of trans people's journeys. Um, my best friend right now, uh, Gage, she's a YouTuber. I looked up to her. She's, like, six months ahead of me in and hormones and she was always a big influence for me so um those are like my main ones people that i don't know yeah that i was able to talk to reach out to provided like support which has been really cool so that kind of makes me think of the next question i had um visibility can you know bring hope like you're saying like kind of give that encouragement kind of normalize our experiences and tell us in a way that it's okay to be ourselves but there's a lot of people that still can't be out or still feel like they can't be visible for a number of reasons. So I'm wondering, do you have any like words of support or encouragement, affirmation, anything like that for people who can't be out or visible? I think whenever, cause I was raised very like um, Catholic, um, you know, uh, Hispanic, uh, there's like this machismo like attitude towards like my community. And so I, the idea of uh, me expressing being who I am was very obviously taboo to my whole culture and it was very suffocating. Um, so before coming out, I was very overwhelmed by, yeah, just the idea of losing anyone or maybe I was alone in this. As I've gone older and as I've gone through my transition, when I finally moved away from my circle and kind of started everything, I started to realize that the world is so much bigger than what you think it is whenever you are like 
small and afraid and you're kind of stuck in this bubble. The world is so much bigger. There are so many people like you who are willing to love and support you and take care of you. And that was something that I realized um, after losing everything. Um, I quickly gained so much support and love from a new family. And it was really, really affirming and amazing. And so I think, you know, with everything, if I can provide any like hopeful um, help or like hopeful uh, advice, it'd just be that you know, the world is bigger and there are people out there that can give you that support and love you. And um, yeah, you're not alone. I know that's like cheesy and cliche, but like genuinely, you're not alone. It may be cliche, but I think it's very true and very powerful. Yeah. It's something that like I've, I've just been so appreciative of like, finding like people that are like like-minded who have gone through similar experiences and just knowing like wow like people like you've existed at all like along and like I haven't been like I haven't been alone and even like years later finding out that like people I went to school with are also trans and I'm like like I was never alone this whole time and so yeah I would just say the world is bigger so even though it seems a certain way it doesn't necessarily mean that it is that way so kind of just a, a last fun question hopefully fun um what's one of your favorite things about identifying with the community about identifying as non-binary it's really it's really freeing i think i don't know i feel like a lot of times i in a lot of ways my entire life i felt very constrained just like always like i don't know i always felt like i never really quite fit in um in like really anything and so i don't know finding myself finding my identity as someone who is non-binary it was just really freeing because I was able to just kind of be myself and not feel like I had any like any anchors kind of holding me down. And I was able to just like not worry anymore about like every little thing. And I was able to be me without having to second guess everything that I ever like any decision I ever made or how I presented myself. I was able to just kind of be free of everything. And so that was been really, really nice. And having friends who also identify the same way that I do and kind of talking with them and just kind of seeing their experiences and how they feel and express themselves. And it's really cool to just see how diverse like this whole community is. And so, yeah, I think it's just really cool. Like just be able to like not feel so constrained and just, I don't know, just be myself. And that's really cool. Yeah. It just like opens up the world and connections for so many new things. Like, yeah, no, like one of the biggest things for me was just, When I came out, I found I was able to just connect with other people on such a deeper level. And it's amazing. It's, yeah, I, yeah, it's definitely like one of the best parts. And just like, I don't know, it's when you have that sort of, when you have that community with like other people, you have that shared thing. Um, The relationships are there. They're so, they're so deep. And I don't know, it it is like a family. And so when you have those deeper connections, it's, it's just very warm. So is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you want to share about yourself or trans day of visibility or really anything else? I just, yeah, I think the main thing that I always like try to like push and I, and I say this a million times, but there always is someone out there who cares and loves you. We're, we're here at the end of the day, like we're trans, we're here. We exist as Oreos likes to tweet. Um, trans people exist and And I think, yeah, that's mainly it. I'm also asking everybody who's doing videos with me to identify an organization or charity or anything that supports trans people that you want to ask the audience, whoever watches this video, to support if they can. So this is like a self-plug. I do have a GoFundMe for top surgery. I have surgery coming April um, 8th if you want to support that in any way. Um, but beyond that, um, if there is anything that I could recommend, potentially kind of like sharing or asking you guys to donate to, uh, the Homeless Black Trans Women Fund, uh, it's based out of, um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Atlanta. And um, my friend and I, uh, through our podcast, we, um, we've we donated uh, to there a few times. So I recommend uh, looking into that. It's a GoFundMe. Wonderful. Well, I'll put a link both to your own GoFundMe and the one for the homeless black trans women down in the description below. So encourage everyone to donate if they can, if it's within your means. Thank you so much, Olivia. This has been great. As always, Tipsy and I love you all who are watching and hope that you're staying safe and sound. 
If you have not done so already, please be sure to give this a huge thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.